to the regional ceremony for Northeast Indiana and Northwest Ohio Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. I'm Charles Shepard, President and CEO of Fort Wayne Museum of Art, the regional affiliate. Today, we celebrate the creative achievements of over 500 students who entered either art or writing and the nearly 700 regional awards that they earned. Although our celebrations look a bit different this year, our purpose, recognizing the talented students and educators of our region, remains unchanged, and we thank you for joining us for this momentous occasion. Since their inception in 1923, the Scholastics Awards have become the most prestigious recognition of art and writing in the country, designed to reward teens for their innovation and their originality, overseen nationally by the Alliance for Young Artists and Writers, the program has grown to include over 100 regional affiliates around the country, with the Fort Wayne Museum of Art joining their ranks in 2004. The awards have been, the awards have become an integral part of our services to the youth of Northeast Indiana and Northwest Ohio, and these awards and the year-long program that produces them are a key and central part to the mission of this museum, which is to educate all those in the arts about the arts. We are so grateful to the program's sponsors whose generosity makes this all possible. That would be the James Foundation and the Lawrence Building Corporation. The Fort Wayne Museum of Art is funded in part by Arts United of Greater Fort Wayne. This activity is also made possible in part by a grant from the Indiana Arts Commission and the National Endowment for the Arts, a federal agency. We also thank you, the award recipients, your friends and families, and your educators for joining us today. In an ordinary year, we'd be gathering in person to register and recognize each student on the stage, where I'd have the good honor to shake each of your hands and congratulate you personally. Although we're unable to come together in person, I'm so glad we're able to gather here today online. Throughout today's program, we'll be highlighting much of the awarded artwork, some of which you've already seen, with special recognition for the top regional honors and a chance to meet some of the minds behind each piece of extraordinary work. I want to wish you all heartfelt congratulations on creating work that has earned this prestigious recognition. And I want to make sure I thank all the educators who help each student rise to the peak of their creativity. Thank you all so much. My name is Alyssa Dumeyer. I'm Director of Children's Education at the Fort Wayne Museum of Art, and I have the great honor of overseeing our regional awards and coordinating the art side of the program. Even in this challenging year, we received over 1,400 art submissions and over 700 writing submissions, which speaks not only to the dedication of the students and educators of our region, but also to the importance of the Scholastic Awards program. I know firsthand the value of that early validation for a young artist or writer, but also how daunting it can be to put your creative work out into the world to be judged and evaluated. I want to congratulate everyone who took that important step and thank you for sharing your unique ideas and perspectives. The Scholastic Awards exist to elevate your voice. What you have to say is important, and we are so honored to play a role in sharing that work with a wider audience. The arts, both literary and visual, inspire, communicate with us, and connect us. In this year, when we can't all be physically together, your work has brought us together in spirit, and that is pretty powerful. This year, 689 art or writing works were awarded recognition in the form of an honorable mention, silver key, or gold key award. The gold key works represent the best of the best from our region and will automatically proceed to the next round of adjudication in New York City, where they will be eligible for national recognition. National medalists will be announced through your art and writing network account on March 17th. All the young people honored today join a long line of esteemed alumni of the Scholastic Awards, ranging from visual artists like Andy Warhol, to authors like Stephen King and jo Joyce Carol Oates, to actors, filmmakers, and designers. 
There may be one student, or even many students, recognized here today who will become a household name like these past alumni. But no matter what path your future careers take, we know they will be bright. Throughout the rest of today's program, we'll be highlighting the art and writing works that have been singled out for special recognition. And I want to thank some of our partners for helping us do so. Katie Anderson of WBOI, who works with us to celebrate our American Visions and Voices nominees. And I also want to thank Downtown Fort Wayne and Art This Way for sponsoring their own special award and presenting that during today's ceremony. Entering your work into a jury competition, participating in exhibitions, selling your first artwork, these are all important milestones for a young artist. Which brings us to our first special award, the Purchase Awards. The Scholastic Awards are an important way for the Fort Wayne Museum of Art to support and nurture the next generation of great artists. And one way we do that is by selecting two artworks to add to the museum's education collection for display both here at the museum and through area school programs. This is our chance to invest in your future and to give the museum lasting proof that we knew you when. Congratulations to the 2021 Purchase Awards. Here they are. Hello, I'm Katie Anderson, Program Director at 89.1 WBOY Fort Wayne, NPR News and Diverse Music. For over a decade, WBOI has partnered with the Fort Wayne Museum of Art for the Scholastic Arts and Writing Awards, a regional and national competition that provides creative students with opportunities for recognition, exhibition, and publication. Every year, regional winners are invited to record their stories at WBOI Studios and have their recordings edited by staff and distributed via podcast. WBOI is an organization that is committed to the craft of storytelling, and we are thrilled to provide this opportunity and our platform to the next generation of storytellers so that they can share their ideas and their words with a larger audience. The American Visions and Voices nominees are the highest regional honors in the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. Five works of writing and five works of art are selected by local judges from each region, and these nominees are honored separately at our regional awards ceremony. From the regional nominees, a panel of jurors in New York City selects one writer and one artist to receive an American Voices or American Visions medal at the national ceremony at Carnegie Hall in New York. The American Visions and Voices medalists also receive a gold medal at the national level. My name is Riley Belts, and my work, Sapphic, has been nominated as an American Voice nominee. And this just means so much to me because, especially in this area of my state, there's just so much hate and so much injustice and judgment passed upon the LGBTQ community. And so, for my work, which centers around it, to get um, acknowledged and taken to such a high level, it's just it's really honoring and it means a lot to me. So I hope that this work that I've created will help people that read it to see that love is love and we're all <laughs> fools in love. <laughs> This award means everything to me. I put a lot of myself onto my piece, to, so to be recognized for that is something that's truly special. But also I can thank my parents for inspiring me and telling their stories, and inspired me to and motivated me to write my own. I'd also like to give a special thanks to my teacher, Mr. Todoran. There was one day in class when he shared a very raw and personal story with us in class, and that motivated me to write my own. And it's something that I hadn't really done before, so to be recognized for putting myself out there, really means a lot.
Hi, I'm Desma Kosciuszko, and I am so honored to receive this award. I hope to be a writer one day, so it is extremely encouraging to have the opportunity to stand with you today. My work, Waking Dreams, is a science fiction thriller about an experimental sleep drug. My inspiration for this stems from my own past. I have always had trouble, difficulty sleeping, so I was prescribed melatonin. I became fascinated fascinated with the possible side effects of my medication. And researching this led me to the information that would someday inspire waking dreams. The message I hope to send with this work is that there's inspiration everywhere, from a simple medication to a natural disaster. You, all you have to do is let your creativity guide you. Hi, my name is Natalie Turman. I'm an American Voices nominee and I wrote the short story For Everest. For Everest is about this traveler hiking up a mountain with the body of their dead lover in their backpack. And the whole goal of the hike is to find a perfect place to drop their lover and let the earth consume her. And this story is actually one of the more heartfelt, wholesome stories that I've written, if that tells you anything about my writing. <laughs> the first issue I had with the story was I was going to make it a comedy. And it never went anywhere because that, that wasn't the story that was supposed to be written. So I thought it was dead after that. I was like, okay, no, no body drop comedy. We're not doing that. And then, well, like in July, in the middle of the night, I don't even remember what I was doing, but I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, my brain said to me, "Foreverist." I was like, okay, it's a cool title, brain. Thank you. Um, I mean, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. And then slowly, my brain went, "Forever rest." And then all of a sudden I had this title and I had this final line for a story. It didn't take me too long to connect the dots that, okay, this was the body drop story, but it was a lot different because the first thing, right when I heard the term forever rest, I got the last line, which is, and together, together, the two fell into a forever rest. So I had that final line and I knew, okay, that's more of a serious tone. So we're not doing a comedy anymore, but I do have the, I did like the imagery of the backpack and the hiker. So then I kept trying to write the story, but no matter what I did, this main character, they would not tell me anything about themselves. They would not tell me what color their hair was, what they sounded like, what they, they did tell me what they wore, which was a coat. But other than that, they told me everything about their lover, Mindy. I got everything about her. And at one point I just, I was so frustrated. I had to sit down this character and ask them, are you ever gonna tell me anything about yourself? Because this story isn't going anywhere. This story is about you and coming over like problems as a person. I need you to tell me something about yourself so we can start the story. And they sort of looked at me, well, metaphorically looked at me, and they were like, well, it doesn't matter. And then all of a sudden, the story just unfolded in front of me. Their character was not about them at all. That's like sort of what their character was, this complete devotion to this dead lover. I realized this is not the Weary Traveler story. This is Mindy's story through the eyes of the Weary Traveler. And then all of a sudden, I had this weird love story. So it was it was a rough journey to get there, but then once I got to that point, the ball started unrolling. Yeah, we have a story that is right here now. The main goal of this piece is the wishes of the weary traveler that they told to me. Um, sort of letting the audience see who Mindy was and sort of letting them fall in love with her. Thank you very much for this nomination. It is such an honor and a privilege to be recording this video right now and saying these, saying that I'm an American Voices nominee because it's just something I could have never imagined. Um, just two years ago, I was writing a horrible novel. Um, so it's crazy to, to sort of have written a story that touched people. Um, but I definitely would not have gotten as far as I did without the help from my friends, family, educators. It is very much a privilege to have had their help, to have had their voice and their input into the story. Because without it, the story definitely would not have the same amount of power as it does now. This award means so much to me and I'm so grateful to have gotten as far as I have and the love and support of everybody around me is amazing and I'm so happy for it. With this project, I wanted to test my abilities with embroidery. I had been looking at so many embroidery projects and I felt, and I felt so inspired to do my own take on it. 
and I wanted to challenge myself with keeping clean lines within the painting itself and trying to keep nice clean straight lines with the embroidery too. And I feel super happy with how it turned out. And I wanted people to look at this and feel calm by looking at it with all the muted colors and the nice gathering of the colors as a collective. I think they work very well and I wanted to give it a little bit of a 70s vibe with the rainbow. And I just wanted people to have something better to look at with all of COVID going on right now. It's been a really rough year for everybody so I wanted to give something a little bit of a lighter mood to help everybody through everything. This award means a lot actually because freshman year I took this because my grandma then throughout the last three years of high school I really liked it and this year's Weeble really made me dig deep and put out some good projects. My project making process is where I draw a sketch then get approved by Zweeble. Then we put our minds together and create projects that relate to my hobbies and the current pandemic going on throughout the world today. My biggest hurdle was probably from the quarantine from my junior year. It took me off the wheel for a while. So this year when we came back to school, it looked like the first two weeks, I couldn't make a picture for that period of time. Then the third week I came in, I made two and I haven't had a problem making them since. Hi, my name is Shalina Gephardt and I'm an American Visions nominee for the piece Glamorous and Masculine. Um, I also won a silver key for my portfolio and all my pieces are really about things that society has failed everyone on. Um, but for the piece Glamorous and Masculine, um, I was really hoping that the viewer would um, kind of look at the man and understand his pain when being judged for just kind of existing and expressing himself. Um, I also hope the viewer will take away um, creative freedom from this piece and not define anything by just boy or girl and anybody. I planned, shot, and edited my American Visions award winning piece, I Wanted to Be White, in a span of two hours. Um, this project kind of goes into the idea of how I place myself in a mental box throughout the entirety of my childhood. Um, and kind of separated myself from my culture because of the microaggressive comments that I was kind of surrounded by. Um, for example, the word that I painted on the piece is a derogatory term that's used against Asian people. Um, and obviously, uh, I, I'm like learning to grow out of this and everything like that. But this piece kind of embodies how I, how I struggled with that for the majority of my childhood and how I'm learning to grow out of that now. Hi, I'm Penelope Swift, and I am the recipient of the American Vision Award for my piece, If You Play With Fire. This piece was inspired by my favorite book, Little Women, written by Louisa May Alcott. This piece is also gonna be part of my AP portfolio, and which is centered around tying Greek myths and English adages together to make a connection. So for this piece, I decided to use the Greek myth Pandora and tie the saying, if you play the fire, you will get burnt. This is because Pandora was said to be the first woman to walk the earth, and she was given a jar and told not to open it. However, curiosity got the best of her, and she decided to open the jar, releasing good and evil into the world. This is how the Greeks justified that good and evil. I thought this worked nicely with the English adage, if you play the fire, because Pandora played with fire and got burned by opening the jar and releasing evil into the world. Creative hurdles that I had to overcome were definitely learning the medium. Since I am primarily an acrylic painter, I found that working with oil was extremely difficult. This piece had come very far from where it had started. I had to learn the process of layering my paints rather than just slacking it on and thinking it's okay. Oil paints tend to blend a little differently too, so I had to learn how to do that. Thank you all so much for awarding me through the American Vision Award. This is the biggest award I've ever received through Scholastics, and I am beyond excited to be a recipient.
nervous. With many schools going virtual in response to the pandemic, I was worried that a creative competition would fall to the wayside as both teachers and students acclimated to a virtual classroom or a hybrid physical and online learning experience. I was, however, happily proved wrong as our writing submissions fell almost exactly where they did last year. For 2021, we had 765 submissions in 11 categories and 272 received awards. Congratulations to all. The first step to recognition is having the nerve and confidence to submit your work. And I hope in the future you will continue to do so with the encouragement of your educators and peers. The second step to recognition comes from the competition itself. And this year, both the writing and art judges reinforced their commitment to the creative community of Northeast Indiana and Northwest Ohio. Whether right next door across the street at Arts United or as far away as Mexico, art judges amicably and flexibly moved online to discuss works that touched on the self, family, civic expression, pop culture, and more, while writing judges hunkered down to read works that explored assigned class writings, social protests, family trips, meteor showers, apocalyptic worlds, and time travel. Adjudicating either art or writing jurors follow the same three guidelines, originality, technical skill, and personal vision and voice. Jurors provide us not only with their expertise, but also with their time, and many of them are former or present educators, work in the arts or literary community, have written books, practice art, or university and graduate students. Let's hear from them in their own words what prompts them to participate and what keeps them returning year after year to see and hear the visions and voices of the next generation of artists and writers. Hello, my name is Lillian Tauber and I am one of the judges for the Critical Essays category. Um, this is my favorite category to judge because I feel like it gives me a, a small glimpse into the minds of today's young people and every year I'm so impressed by the thought and the effort that goes into writing these essays. Um, so I would like to congratulate um, everyone who submitted an essay this year. Um, I felt that this year it was harder to judge than during other years simply because all of the essays that I got to read I thought were just of such outstanding quality. Um, and of course in particular I would like to um, extend my special congratulations to everyone who received an award. Um, but like I said, you know, my most sincere congratulations to everyone um, on just producing such fantastic work this year and I would like to say you know keep up the good work um, keep being so thoughtful and introspective and critical and good luck with all of your future endeavors hello I'm Chris Gaines associate professor of art and design at Purdue University Fort Wayne I teach printmaking and drawing I was lucky enough to be chosen as a juror in the portfolio in 2D uh, categories in this year's Classic Art Awards. I want to congratulate all the participants uh, in the awards. Uh, it was a real pleasure to see the creativity, the ambition, and the quality of the work. And I was also so inspired by the talent that exists in our region at such a young age. I look forward to seeing the exhibition in person, and I wish each and every one of you the best of luck on your futures, and I know they'll be bright. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bette Yard, and I write and illustrate sci-fi and fantasy comics. Coincidentally, I have also been judging the sci-fi and fantasy submissions for Scholastic for the last few years. Whether it's half-human mutants that are escaping from the government, superheroes that are exploring their own morals and powers, or horrific monsters that have secretly replaced your parents, you guys are cooler than I am, so I can't wait to read what you've got for me next. Hi there, my name is Tim Parsley and I uh, work as an artist, a muralist, as well as a professor of painting and drawing and program director for studio art here at the University of St. Francis. 
just want to extend um, a congratulations to all of you for the work that you've done and the awards you've received. They are well deserved and I've had an opportunity now to be one of the jurors for Scholastics over the last few years and this year was no exception. I left very encouraged that day after looking at your work and seeing the kind of ambition and innovative risk-taking as well as the ideas that were being expressed and so as an art educator in this area it gave me a, a lot of hope that we have some incredibly talented young artists in our region and so you guys are the ones please keep it up we believe in you and hopefully you're very proud of what you've accomplished take care hi my name is alex hall and i manage the art this way program for the fort wayne downtown improvement district and i am here today to say congratulations to the Scholastic Award winners for this year's Fort Wayne Downtown Improvement District sponsored Social Justice Award. The two winners are in the arts and writing categories. Each award winner will receive a trophy and a monetary prize of $250. Congratulations to the two recipients. Okay, so first question, do you believe in aliens? Go. Uh, you, you don't? No, I don't believe in that, but I believe in all
classroom instructors to become mentors to their students, helping them navigate opportunities for creative growth, including but certainly not limited to the Scholastic Awards. Their participation in this program is one of many ways in which they go beyond their call of duty as teachers, even in this year of so many additional challenges. This year, there were 120 educators from 77 schools linked with the awarded works you can see throughout the ceremony. We would not be here without their year-round behind-the-scenes dedication. Educators, wherever you're with us, wherever you're joining us from today, please give yourselves a really big pat on the back. This year, we sought nominations for this award from the awarded students in both art and writing and received an overwhelming response. We heard about how educators have adapted their teaching to the pandemic, how they've nurtured their students' creativity throughout their high school careers, and also the positive classroom environments they've created, and so much more. We thank you all and wish we could give you each an award for the important and endless support you've given these students. But from these nominations, we selected six art educators to receive special recognition in the form of gift certificates to Dick Blake, three writing educators will receive a gift certificate to Bookshop, and we hope that you'll use these small tokens of appreciation to treat yourselves but know that they will probably go instead towards that new something you've been wanting for your classroom. So here are the 2021 Outstanding Educators, along with some of the feedback from their nominators. Congratulations and thank you again, educators. Hannah Burnworth from Manchester Junior Senior High School. Nicole Croy from Carroll High School. Turbusco Junior Senior High School. Sarah Jones from Homestead High School. Adam Zwiebel from Northfield High School. Hamilton from 
Canterbury Middle School. Kevin McNulty from Penn High School. Graduating seniors in our region submitted 61 art or writing portfolios, which contained six pieces of their best work and marked the culmination of their creative work as high school students. 19 portfolios were selected as gold or silver keys this year. Six gold key portfolios were selected as those with the strongest and most cohesive vision or voice to represent our region at the national level, where 16 gold medal portfolio winners will receive an unrestricted $10,000 cash grant scholarship. National silver medal portfolio winners will be nominated to institutions of higher education for scholarships. It is an incredible honor to be selected as one of our region's top students and to represent us nationally. It is our honor, therefore, to introduce to you this exceptionally creative group of students, many of whom we'll hear from in their own words. Hey, my name is Hope Brown. I'm a senior at Carroll High School and I received a silver key for my photography portfolio, Focals of Faith. This is my fourth year taking photography and I've enjoyed doing it for a very long time. Uh, my second year in photography, we were introduced to the process of altered negatives. Um, altered negatives is when you photograph a roll of film like normal, but either before you develop or after you develop the film, you destroy it. There are a lot of different ways to destroy the film, um, such as boiling them or mixing different chemicals. Um, but the method that I usually use is to burn the film over fire. Uh, so when I first did this, I fell in love with the images I created as well as the process. And it has been something that I've gone back to um, just throughout photography. It creates some really cool looking images. Uh, my portfolio is a collection of six of my many altar negatives. And they are all images of different places of worship um, from Fort Wayne. So my Usually what I photograph is places of worship, just because so many churches and different buildings are very beautiful, and getting to just photograph those um, and then manipulate them over the fire creates really cool, um, just different images. Uh, my process for creating, um, I usually go to a church or a place of worship and photograph and shoot a roll or two of film, and then I develop the film like normal, and once the developing is done, I use a candle and I melt it or burn it over the fire. So melting it kind of softens the film and allows me to stretch it and twist it um, and just manipulate the film. And after I do that, I scan it. Um, and usually something that's really cool is the process of burning it adds color to the film that's black and white. So a lot of my images pick up some blue from the fire which is something that's super cool. Um, and so then I scan them and it creates these super cool images that I have absolutely fallen in love with and I hope you will too. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy my work.
Hi, I'm Grace Caffey and I was awarded a silver key for my senior writing portfolio. I am amazed that I was chosen for this award as it means that I wrote something that somebody else enjoyed and that is always one of my biggest goals. I tend to keep my writings to myself. My parents haven't even read the pieces I submitted for my portfolio, but the things that I wrote I felt were very close to my heart and important to get on to paper. Writing is my release, it's my stress relief, it's where I can put down the thoughts that nobody else will see and that's actually where my first poem came from. It came from my thoughts during the first quarantine, how I felt like I couldn't talk to anybody, like I was going crazy with all of my thoughts just stuck inside my head with nowhere to go, absolutely no release. A lot of my pieces are inspired by my past, present, and perceived future. I wrote a piece that is about my great grandma. I titled it Fat. It's a poem about her life because she was a huge role model for me growing up and looking back there's a lot of things that I regret and I wish that she was still around so I could talk to her. So that piece is very important to me. Um, before the deadline for my portfolio, I had one piece, I only had five pieces written, and I needed one more. I had absolutely no idea what to write about, and then my mom was diagnosed with stage 3 melanoma cancer. It hit me like a ton of bricks. I kind of always took it for granted that my mom would always be around, and hopefully she will be, but there's a possibility that it won't and I was feeling this very heavy sense of what is death and I started to write about a euphemism about shopping for a can a glass of milk and it's not expired because you haven't passed away yet and I wanted to take a lighter approach to death because it felt so heavy on me in the moment and that is why I wrote that about a dream being in a grocery store shopping for milk. I hope that anyone who reads my writing finds an escape in listening to somebody else's problems for a while. That is what, that is what reading has always been for me and will continue to be a place to escape to when the world gets a little too rough to handle. I love reading any kinds of books that take me into another world, another person's mind, another place, and I really hope that my read that my writings can do that for somebody else. Hi everybody, my name is Sabine Croy. I'm a senior at Carroll High School. And this year I received a gold key portfolio as well as a silver key portfolio for my photography. And I just kind of wanted to come share today some of my inspiration behind these portfolios um, as well as my motivations and kind of my thought process um, when creating. So uh, first of all, I just really wanted to thank the Fort Wayne Museum of Art as well as the panelists who selected my photography and my portfolios. Um, this is such an amazing honor and I'm really glad to be part of something um, so awesome, the Fort Museum of Art, Scholastics, um, and just supporting the arts. Um, yeah, so I guess, first of all, to kind of talk about my first portfolio, my gold key portfolio is titled Dwellings. And for me, I just really wanted to capture um, the spaces that I inhabit and my relationship with them. So for photography, I kind of wanted to document myself, so all of these were self-portraits. And um, not necessarily the focus was always on me, it was more in capturing um, the space that I'm in so um, yeah so it's just about me and my relationship with space and kind of these places that really mean a lot to me um, and for my second portfolio my silver key portfolio is called a natural state of being 
and it was kind of similar to my first portfolio in a way because it was documenting myself. They are all self-portraits as well. But I really wanted to document and capture me and my relationship with nature. Um, I really love plants and I really love nature in general. So for me, I just wanted to capture that relationship and kind of document that. So that's a little snippet about those two portfolios. Um, I really hope that when you see my work, um, you can kind of get a glimpse into, you know, my thought process as a photographer and, um, you know, things that are really, um, that I'm really passionate about, but um, I hope that you can feel inspired as well. And I just thank you for your time and I hope you enjoy my artwork and I hope you enjoy the other artists' um, work as well. Thank you. I found out that my portfolio actually won an award. I want to say that it was kind of a sigh of relief because I wasn't as fond of what I put out as I would like to and I thought I could have done better with it. But knowing that someone um, appreciated my work and thought that it deserved something really, um, really made me sigh of relief. Um, and I'm really grateful that someone else liked my work. Um, but when I was creating my portfolio, um, when it came time to actually coming up with my theme. I remember sitting with a group of my friends, my childhood friends, and we were just having these deep conversations. And a lot of my friends grew up with these mental disorders or developed these mental illnesses um, in the span of their life so far. And I thought, why not push my creative skills um, to do something that's not really Put, to put two ideas together that aren't normally put together. So my medium is fashion design and I wanted to include psychology and in this case was mental disorders and mental illnesses. Um, so when it came time to actually make these um, projects, I wanted to make it something that was beautiful and but something that would be understandable to a viewer that not necessarily has that kind of psychologist mindset. And um, one of the problems that I ran into was, okay, I understand that um, some people might already be familiar with um, certain disorders, mental, mental illnesses, and I wanted to include some of those to get um, them interested in them, but also include some other disorders that maybe not, um, that maybe some people don't think of on a daily basis. And so um, I also had trouble with myself and trying to, um, find uniqueness in these disorders, but also trying not to be disrespectful to those who have it. Um, and obviously taking into consideration that not everyone who has these mental disorders or illnesses go through the same things. And so whoever I interviewed for these um, projects, I made sure to tell them this is gonna be your story, what you go through. Um, and so I asked questions like, um, if your disorder were a person, how would they make you feel? How would they look? Um, what kind of colors do you associate with it? Um, what kind of textures do you feel? Um, and also what makes them feel better when they're going through these um, these bumps in their road. So those um, kind of things were I was keeping in mind when creating my projects. And when I have a final product, I hope that whoever looks at these um, designs leaves with intrigue instead of confusion. Um, I want them to question certain elements as to like, why did I choose this color instead of others? Or why do these embellishments um, symbolize what they do? And to go and research these disorders and try to get a better understanding of what these people go through on a daily basis. And um, I hope that whoever looks at these projects has uh, more of an open mind when it comes to mental illness and mental disorders and kind of look at it in a different light instead of just basic words of like, this is what these people go through. And um, I hope that 
my projects can serve as a visual um, to spread more awareness about what these people go through on a daily basis. This year, I won two gold portfolios, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, one of them explored into the idea of healing through art. I went through something that changed my life this year, and it was so hard to figure out how to kind of heal from this and process the emotions that were going through my head at the time. Um, so I spent about 40 to 50 hours shooting and editing the scenario I cannot forgive. And this project is probably like the biggest turning point in my creative career. I'm really thankful for all the things I learned from it, as well as how it's helped me heal from the event that happened to me. My second portfolio called What's Wrong with America was meant to embody all the things that happened in America and what I think needs to change. Um, I started this project kind of like on my own back maybe in sophomore year, but my teacher was really impressed with it. So I continued on with it and kind of turned it into something even bigger than myself. And I'm still going to continue it even after, you know, winning all of this stuff. I still am going to keep adding pieces to it as more and more things happen in America. I really think doing something like this is really crucial and is a really good way to kind of speak to other people and educate them about what goes on in America and around the world in general um, through art. Hi, my name is Lily Popey. I'm a student at Manchester Junior Senior High School and I won two silver key portfolios for my portfolio, A Deteriorated Society and A World of Strangers. In my portfolio, A Deteriorated Society, my goal was to create a society that replicated our own, but using metaphors from our real life in a more upfront and forward way. Throughout my portfolio, you can see different metaphors being represented in a physical matter to represent struggles that our country is going through and our society as a whole. Some problems that I tackled in my piece include governmental issues, misogyny, racism, mental illness, and death. In my second portfolio, A World of Strangers, I wanted to tackle the curiosity that humans have when they see a stranger pass them by the street. Many people can say that they've seen a stranger and thought about what their life could be like. Is it similar to theirs or is it very different? We pass hundreds of people every day and I always find myself wondering like what kind of life are they living and are they living a fulfilling life or are they in pain? With my piece, I wanted to create these strangers in their own environment. When viewers see this portfolio, I want them to see strangers in their spaces and I want them to come up with their own stories when they see these people. My favorite part about this entire portfolio is to hear other people's stories and what they come up with for each of these strangers that I have created. My end goal for the entire portfolio is to get people more interested in learning about others and taking the time to notice smaller things that maybe they would pass every day in their lives. I want to thank the Fort Wayne Museum of Art and the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards team this year and everyone who was behind it. I appreciate my two silver key portfolios and I am excited to do more art in the future. Thank you. To me, this award means a lot. It shows how someone can still be recognized for their achievements, even if it isn't athletic or academic. Scholastic is students who are more creatively gifted, a place to be represented. The path to this award took many days filled with frustration, excitement, and from my art teacher, a lot of support. When he first threw out the idea to keep one of my projects that was damaged, I was skeptical, but once I started splitting more projects in half, I started to fall in love with them. 
It was often a struggle trying to keep the projects from falling apart and breaking, but I eventually was able to figure out how to kind of keep them together. I hope that those trials and tribulations show others that no matter how difficult something is, with a little hard work and dedication, anything's possible. That nearly marks the end of today's ceremony, but the celebrations don't end here. We'd like to invite you all to come visit this beautiful exhibition of all the awarded works here at the Fort Wayne Museum of Art through April 10th. We recognize in this exhibition that artists want to be exhibited. They want to have their artworks on display in a gallery or museum for all to see. But what do writers want? Writers want to be published to fulfill this aspect of recognition. Over the past few years, we have begun to publish books of the Gold and Silver Key Writing Awards in all categories, from critical essay to poetry. You will find hardcover versions of these books on exhibit, um, but if you would like a copy of your own work or a class copy of all the published works, you can go to lulu.com, L-U-L-U.com, and search the keyword Scholastic 2021. All books are sold at cost. Before we close, we also have to thank a few more groups of people who make all of this celebration possible. First, our museum interns who helped install this beautiful exhibition, the museum staff, especially Ms. Katie Thompson for doing a fabulous job overseeing the writing portion of the awards year after year. I'm going to give one final thank you to our jurors for donating their time to choose these awarded artworks and writing works. And a thank you to parents and school administrators for their support of their students and educators. I, in turn, would of course like to thank Alyssa as well for spearheading all of this. Every year, she makes a beautiful calendar that sits on our desk that reminds us of all the things we need to get done so everything gets done on time and the exhibit is open for all of you to enjoy. Also, I want to give a big shout out to Katie Anderson, who you heard from before, as she is our partner at WBOI and helps us record the American Voices nominees. And a special shout out to Caitlin Bingley, our Director of Visual Communication here for designing the hardcover, paperback, and ebook covers. She put so much time and attention into those and they turned out amazing this year. And thank you all one more time for joining us today in this kind of unusual celebration. We also want to wish one final congratulations to all who participated in this year's awards, and we'll leave you now with a list of all the award recipients and one final look at some of the awarded artwork.
Thank you.